Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to look at how to properly make use of polygon surface imperfections by adding them to a material in Keyshot. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the uh, textures that we'll be using. We're going to use this one, Floor Smudges Type A Medium 001 and Gun Scratches 003, both of which I already have saved. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's all the files we're going to need. So let's head over to Keyshot. Okay, so if you followed along to my previous video, you, you would have uh, seen me put this basic wooden floor material together, and that's where we're picking up from this time. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, if you followed along to my previous video, you would have seen me set up this material, um, and we're going to basically carry on from there um, and add in some surface imperfections to make this material look a little bit more realistic. Let's start by heading over to the material panel and then clicking on the material graph and that will bring up the nodes that we used last time. Um, just to recap what we imported, we brought in the color map, the reflection map, which we inverted to turn it into a specular map. Uh, we brought in the gloss map, which we also inverted to turn it into a roughness map. Also on the gloss map, we adjusted the brightness to a value of two, um, basically to counteract the fact that Keyshot doesn't have a way of bringing in a texture using a different color space. So it was kind of a manual fix for that. And we also brought in a normal map where I adjusted the normal tick box there just to identify that it is one. And that's, uh, yeah, that was it for last time. So what we're gonna be working on first is the gloss map. So what I'm gonna do is move all these nodes up here a bit and just give us a bit of room to work like so. And then I'm gonna right mouse button, go to textures and texture map. And that gives us a opportunity to load in a new file. So I'm gonna do that now. And I'm going to navigate to where the floor smudges are, which could take a minute. I have quite a few in here. There we go. And if I open up the folder, you'll notice we have a couple of different types of file. Um, white smudges on a black background, and we also have black smudges on a white background. Uh, and you use those for, for different uh, sort of purposes. Um, and in our case, we want the white smudges on a black background. So I'm going to select that and hit open. And that gives us our smudges. Good. Now I'm going to hit right mouse button and I'm going to go to utilities and then color composite. And what this will allow us to do is basically blend two textures together and give, give us control over the way that we do that. So um, it's a, not particularly intuitive <laughs> as to what the different inputs mean. Normally there'd be like a layer one and a layer two on a composite where it just uses source and background. Um, but basically the background is the equivalent of like a layer one. That's where you put your original material in. So I will take the uh, color invert, put it into background, and then feed that into roughness. And it shouldn't affect the texture whatsoever. And it hasn't. Good. So that's working. Always a good start. <laughs> um, now what I'm going to do is quickly feed the texture map into the diffuse just so I can see the kind of distribution of the smudges um, and as you can see the smudges at least compared to the size of the floor are a little bit off the uh, they look a little bit on the small side so for this particular texture I'm going to adjust the width and height so let's, uh, I can't remember which way this goes actually. Let's go to two, and that makes them bigger, and that's actually perfect. That's, that'll do nicely for us. So, that's that done. <laughs> um, what I'll do now is plug the color back in to restore our texture, and then I'm gonna take our smudges and plug them into the source input of the color composite, and then double click on it so we can access the properties. Now, by default that's going to look awful um, because it's just mixing basically it's just taking the, the white value and just using that as 100% white and yeah it's not quite what we want what we want to do is use a screen modifier so if I click on the blend mode and then we can go down to screen and what a screen does is it allows you to overlay the white areas of a map on top of an existing map so we've got our existing map that's our our roughness map at least it is after we've inverted it and then we're going to take the white areas of our smudges and overlay them on top of that map and the source uh, alpha will allow us to control that so let me just shrink this down a bit so we can properly see our material like so and then we should be able to just adjust this value to bring in the amount of smudges that we want and we don't want to go crazy here it's supposed to be a subtle effect so maybe something like 
that should work pretty well another thing you might want to do on the texture map um, is increase the brightness to two because again we'd recommend this bring in, this be brought in using a linear color profile but we don't have that option so this is kind of our manual fix so I'll change that to two and then just adjust this source alpha until we get the sort of effect that we want and I think that yeah that looks pretty good so we've got our floor smudges in that's that part done now what we're going to do is work on the normal map because um, that's the bit where we want to bring in our, uh, our scratches so with that done I'm going to go to textures texture map double click on that again load in our scratches which is somewhere down here gun scratches there we go and we have a few different options um, again for using for different purposes in this case though uh, Keyshot has a really nice normal bump blender type of node and uh, so we're going to make use of that and just bring in the scratches normal map like so and then what I can do with that is click the normal map checkbox uh, uh, so the application knows it is a normal map and then just to preview it before we start trying to mix it I'm going to plug those scratches in just so we can see what they're doing and we can see we've got two issues one the normal maps kind of going in the wrong direction those scratches look like they're bumping out so let's fix that by changing the bump height to negative one rather than one perfect now you can see the scratches are digging into the floor uh, and now we just need to adjust the uh, the scaling so let's change the width and height to be about let's try 0.7 these should be nice little scratches yeah that'll do that is good okay so we've now got the uh, texture in place it's just a matter of combining them so let's go to utilities bump add I think that is actually what we want yes how smart so I'm gonna feed the scratches into uh, bump one and the original map into bump two and then we can adjust the ratio using this slider so if we've got it all the way over here we should just see our normal floor and if we had it all the way to one I think if I'm reading this right it's removing the original one yes it is yeah so what you want to do is kind of find a little balance oh it's combining them I thought that node was too good to be true <laughs> it's not it's not a bump add it's more of a bump mix isn't it where you uh, choose between which one you want but that's fine um, I'm going to put mine to about a value of 0.3 so we've got a, a, a subtle sort of scratches effect but we're still getting the majority of the normal information from the original material um, now we've got those smudges in another thing I want to do is take the gloss map and just slightly brighten that up uh, a little more just because we're getting some areas where it's kind of dark it's kind of bottoming out um, for lack of a better term so let's try 2.1 on there maybe 2.2 yeah I still think the smudges are a little on the strong side we probably want to lower the effect of that um, but for the purpose of a demonstration I think that will do nicely so in summary we've taken the wooden floor material from the previous video um, and we've added in some surface imperfections namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more sort of realistic lived-in feel 